Do you believe that the Bible Yes, my brother, the Bible is a textbook on incest. It's a textbook. If you want to know the types and types, and types of incest, you know what is incest? No. no. You see, when you go out with somebody else's wife or daughter and cohibit with them, it is called adultery or fornication. Okay. But when you have sex with your own mother, that's incest. With your own daughter, that's incest. With your sister, that's incest. Now you understand what is incest. And the Bible is a text. Now please, 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 please tell me. Have patience, have patience. My brother, please. have patience. Please. The Bible is a textbook on incest. You see, when the Christian missionary comes, now this is, this is the art you start with the guy. He wants to push the Bible down your throat. He's finding ways and means to get the Bible to you. If he comes with the Bible, you ask him, he says, now, what's that? Is that the Bible? He said, yes. Can I have a look? Oh, he'll be happy to give it to you. That's what he wants. He wants you to handle his Bible, to read his Bible. Now, you open the book. Genesis, the first book of the Bible, chapter 19, verse 30. And you give it back to him. He said, read this. Read this. You come with the Bible. You want to preach to me. I want, you to, I want to hear you read Genesis, the first book of the Bible, chapter 19, verse 30. Give it back to him. Say, read this. In his Bible, read it. And he's not going to read. He's trained. He's a trained missionary. He doesn't follow instructions. He's trained. He's going to scan. And he smells a rat. You know, he smells a rat. Dead rat. Stinking. He wants to change the subject. He was, what work are you doing? Huh? What is the price of oil in your country? What is the price of onions? Damn it all. I said, look, is that the book of God? He said, yes, I want to hear you read. <laughs> so bring it here. Bring it here. Then I said, I have to read it to him. You will have to read it to him. And what do you read? Hazrat Lut alayhi salam, a prophet of God. After the destruction of his nation, Sodom and Gomorrah, he goes and lives in a cave with his daughters. And the eldest daughter in the cave, she, she has an idea of wanting to preserve the seed, the genealogy of her father. So she said, let us make our father drink wine and we will sleep with him and preserve the seed of our father. I'm reading the Holy Bible. This is the Holy Bible talking. So they make the father drink wine and the eldest daughter goes and has sex with her father. And she tells the younger, next night, he said, look, yesterday night I slept with my father. You do the same tonight. You go and do the same. So they made the father drink wine again. And the second one went and slept with the father, had sex with the father. And thus, both the daughters of Lot will be child by the father. Thus, just like that, hakaza. Both the daughters of Lot will be child with the father. So ask the Christian, I'm asking the Christian, what is the moral of that? Genesis chapter 19, verse 30. You see, I have a book called Combat Kit. The next time when I come, inshallah, you know, this I'll have to give it to you. How to give battle to the Nasara, how to ki give the king, king Fu, Kung Fu blow, you know, as a knockout blow. Slaughter the guy without getting hurt. You don't need guns, you don't need grenades. You can do it with the intellect, with knowledge. So asking the Christian, what is the moral of this story? Genesis, still Genesis, chapter 35, verse 22, it speaks about Reuben, the eldest son of Yaqub alayhi salam. He goes and has sex with his mother. And the Bible says, and Israel heard it. People told him, he says, your son, he had sex with, his, with your wife, your father's wife. What is she to you? Your mother. He went and slept with his mother. Hazrat is, Yaqub salam was told, and he didn't lose his temper. Nothing. He didn't get angry. His blood pressure didn't go up. He didn't scold the fellow. He didn't spank the fellow. Nothing. And Allah didn't give him AIDS, gonorrhea, or syphilis. What's the moral? Still Genesis, the first book of the Bible, chapter 38. Verses 15 to 18, he speaks about Judah, the father of the Jewish race. He's going to Timnat to share his sheep. And he sees a woman sitting by the roadside, his daughter-in-law. So he thinks she's a harlot, a whore, a bitch. So she, he comes up to her and he says, allow me to come in unto thee. Let me have sex with you. So she said, what will you give me? Teaching your daughters prostitution. Then the first book of the Bible, teaching your daughters and your sisters prostitution. When somebody says, come on, come on. He said, what will you give me, uncle? So I give you 50 cents. Can't you make it a dollar? Huh? Teaching your daughters to do prostitution. So he said, what will you give me? So I'll give you a goat kid. 
because they didn't carry cash or credit cards those days. They didn't have that. So he said, I'll give you a good kid. He said, what guarantee are you going to give it? You'll enjoy me and you go away? He said, what guarantee do you want? He said, your signet and your bracelet and your star. Asaya Musa, he was carrying. Hmm? Judah, Judah, the father of the Jewish race. Judah, from whom you get the word Judaism, Judea, Huda, Yehuda, Yehudi, all that come from Judah. That man, he cohibits with his daughter-in-law. And first hit, he makes her pregnant. Twins, twins. And these in children of incest, these bastard children, are the great-grandfathers of your God, Jesus. I'm telling the Christian, these are the great-grandfathers of your God, Jesus Christ. What is the moral? What is the moral of that? No moral. Immoral. It's shit, wallah, shit. With the shit that guy is getting customers. With that shit, the Christian is getting customers. And you and I, you can't get customers with the Quran. Come on, tell me why. Why I give you this book. The first one give me the right answer. You and I, we can't get customers with the Quran, and the Christian is getting fish with that shit. Why? Come, come, come. We don't open our mouth. Huh? Yeah, we don't open our mouth. That's the answer. We don't open our mouth. Give it to him. We don't open our mouth. You're not talking, man. You don't talk. That guy is talking. Any bloody rubbish man you can sell. You know, my lemons are sweet. My lemons are sweet. Lemons are lemons are sour, man. But I keep on saying, my lemons are very sweet. My lemon, some fool will buy. You know that? <laughs> Maybe this is sweet lemon. It's a sweet lemon. Because even sweet lemons are sour. Did you know that? They call them sweet lemons in my country. There are lemons, they call sweet lemons. But they're still sour. <laughs> but I say, my lemons are very sweet. Some fool will buy. That guy is selling. You're not talking. You're not selling. Open your mouth, man. Anything, just open your mouth. If you can't talk anything, at least you can talk about your hygiene. Your taharat. If nothing at all, wear a hat. Look, wear a toe, wear a cap. If nothing at all, you can't do anything at all, I say wear a cap. This thing here. This, you know how powerful this is? You don't know. You don't know the strength of this. <laughs> I land here in Kennedy Airport with my son and my grandson. All we have this, everybody. The immigration officer, he goes through my pass our passports, he sees the visas and he stamps it. Then he looks up, he sees this. He said, what is this for? No, he's not trying to be funny. Sincerely, he wants to know, why this? You know, white, white, white. He said, no, this is our identity. We are Muslims. So what is that? He's not trying to be funny, man. He's, he sincerely wants to know what is a Muslim. I said, there are 1,000 million Muslims in the world. You don't know? That's the religion of Islam, therefore, I said, no, I don't know. You think he's joking? No, no, Allah, he's speaking the truth. The guy wants to know. Then he says, yes, he's from China, this man. He's educated in America. He said, and to get a job in immigration, you don't pick up any Tom, Dick and Harry from Brooklyn or, or your Manhattan. You know, these are educated people. Right, the guy is there. He's originally from China. He's educated in America. So he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, in China there are some people, I think they call them Muslims, certain areas. I say, yeah, we've got 50 million Muslims in China. He says, you know, they don't eat the pig. I say, yes, we all Muslims, we don't eat the pig. He said, why? No, he wants to know why. Man, opening up doorways for you. From Chicago to J.F. Kennedy, the hostess. He said, why you got this on? This is an open sisane, opening the doors for you. But we Muslims here, I addressed a, a group of ladies, 300, a couple of days ago, somewhere here in New York. Everyone with hijab, 100% hijab. You want your mothers and daughters and sisters to wear hijab? Your wives, huh? Yes. What's wrong with you? Why don't you, why are you afraid to identify yourself? Why are you ashamed to identify yourself that you are a Muslim? When you want your mothers and wives and daughters, you know, to risk their necks, to wear all those things, I'm for it, I'm for it. But I'm asking that if you want your mothers and sisters and daughters to wear the hijab, why won't you identify yourself that you're a Muslim? It's an open society, it opens the doorway for you, the government said, what are you? Huh? I tell them, I say, look, I'm a fundamentalist. Every hotel I go to, the receptionist, I hear the chance, I say, yeah, I'm a fundamentalist. Huh? 
Does he think I have got a gun? No. You know, with a smiling face, man, you know, I'm a fundamentalist. You know, you think, they think I've got a gun with me, a grenade with me. No, no, no. Then I start telling what is a fundamentalist. So, they're fascinated. Wallah, they are hungry. They want to know why this, why that. Right? You are ashamed to identify yourself. If you only identify yourself. I'm told there are 800,000 Muslims in New York. More than that. Okay, 800,000. If you people have an identity, you will terrify the enemy out of his wits. With all your guns and grenades can't do, he just looks at you, said, there are so many Muslims in, in, in Manhattan, in Bronx. So Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. Because if you have an identity, that's the only thing the guy sees. All the others are sheep and goats. You don't notice them. All the others are, are, are incognito, you know. And you're not worth anything to give you a second look. The sick, the sick. You know the sick people in India. They have the turbans and they have the beard. When it overgrows, it goes back again into the beard, into the turban. No, no, no that's a uniform. That uniform gives them power. In India, they are one, one tenth of the Muslims. We are 150 million Muslims in India, a minority of 150 million people. But we are like sheep and goats, not worth tuppence in that country. Do you know that? The handful of six. Indira Gandhi was bending backwards to appease them, and Rajiv Gandhi gave them everything except independence. Why? Uniform. They have a uniform. Uniform gives you power, recognition. There's somebody, you are somebody, you are somebody. This is your own entity. And for my sake, I want to meet my brothers in the street and I wish you salams. He said, Allah doesn't need this. I say, I know. He doesn't need this. I know. Between you and Allah, no problem. If you deserve Jannah, Allah will give you. If you deserve Jahannam, He'll put you there. He won't make a mistake with you. But me, your brother, I want to recognize you that I can wish you salams in the street and you can wish me back. Why are you depriving me of that opportunity? No. No, my brother. No. No, my brothers. You know, my brothers are talking about establishing an Islamic state. And I said, look, you can't, you haven't got the guts to put on a hat and you want to start, you want to establish an Islamic state. Hmm? What? You can't make this sacrifice of this to put on your head and you want to create an Islamic state and you want to rule the world, you hypocrites. Look, leave it out. Leave it out, man. Don't start with me. I said, look, you haven't got the guts, man, to put this on. You want your wives and daughters to identify themselves, and you are ashamed to identify yourself. Shame on you. Please forgive me, but this is the hug. This is the truth. Yes, next one.